Our ruling is ready on the consolidated petitions to the lead file being petition number E565. We have set out the structure of the ruling, but we will begin from our analysis of the issues that we think are relevant <coughs> now. This is the ruling. Having carefully considered the pleadings, submissions, and evidence of record, we consider the following issues arising for examination. One, what are the prevailing constitutional and statutory interpretation methods? Two, what are the honors of the DCJ and assign judges persons to Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution? Three, other related matters. On the first issue, uh, the Constitution is a document to generous. It is the green norm which legally commands authority and dominance over any other laws, and its interpretation as of necessity must be in a manner that all other laws bow to. The court in S. versus Atchison, 1991. Uh, captured the centrality of the Constitution as follows. The Constitution of a nation is not simply a statute which mechanically defines the structure of government and the relationship between the government and the government. It is a mirror reflecting the national soul, the identification of ideals and aspirations of a nation, the articulation of the values bonding its people and disciplining its government. The spirit and tenor of the Constitution must therefore preside and permit the process of judicial interpretation and judicial discretion. In the matter before the court, the High Court has once again been called upon to address the issue as to whether the Honorable the Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, whom we refer to here in as the DCJ, can exercise the power of assigning and internally expanded benches of the High Court. As such, the interlink between Articles 161 sub Article 2 and Article 163 sub Article 1 and Article 164 sub 65 sub Article 4 of the Constitution as well as Section 5 of the Judicial Service Act come into play. On that score, it is paramount to briefly look at how the Constitution and the statutes ought to be interpreted. As a starting point, the Constitution itself provides for its own theory of interpretation. That is in Article 20, sub Article 4, and Article 259, sub Article 1. Article 20, sub Article 4, requires courts while interpreting the Bill of Rights to promote the values that underlie an open and democratic society based on human dignity, equality, equity, and freedom, and the spirit purport and the objects of the Bill of Rights. Article 259 sub Article 1 commands courts to interpret the Constitution in a manner that promotes its purposes, values, principles, advances, and rule of law. Human rights and fundamental freedoms in the Bill of Rights permits the development of the law and contributes to good governance. In hailing the Constitution of Kenya as highly transformative, as a highly transformative one, courts have over time developed various methods or canons of interpretation. In the case of David Lee and others versus Attorney General, the learned High Court judges dealt with four constitutional interpretive principles, being that the Constitution must be interpreted holistically that the Constitution does not favor formalistic approaches to its interpretation and it must not be interpreted as one would a mere statute, 
the Constitution has provided its own theory of interpretation to protect and preserve its values, objects, and purposes, and that in interpreting the Constitution, non-legal considerations are important to give its true meaning and values. The Supreme Court, in the matter of the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, Supreme Court adversary opinion reference which I have given at paragraph 26 answered the question as to what holistic interpretation of the Constitution means. The court stated as follows. But what is meant by holistic interpretation of the Constitution? It must be, it, it must mean interpreting the Constitution in context. It is contextual analysis of the constitutional provision, reading it alongside and against other provisions, so as to maintain a rational expli explication of what the Constitution must be taken to mean in the light of the history of the issues in dispute and of the prevailing circumstances. In the case of Tiny Fusa was a attorney general which I have given, citation have given, the court was of the firm position that the constitution must be read as an integrated whole. The court observed as follows. The entire constitution has to be read as an integrated whole, and no one particular provision destroying the other, but each sustaining the other. This is the rule of harmony, the rule of completeness and exhaustiveness, and the rule of paramountcy of the written constitution. On the tenet that the Constitution does not favor formalistic approaches to its interpretation and that it must not be interpreted as one would a mere statute, the Supreme Court pronounced itself in the case in re-entering independent electoral commission. The court said as follows, the rules of constitutional interpretation do not favor formalistic or positivistic approaches. The Constitution has incorporated non legal considerations which we must take into account in exercising our jurisdiction. The Constitution has a most modern Bill of Rights that envisions a human rights based and social justice oriented state and society. The values and principles articulated in the preamble in Article 10, in Chapter 6, and in various provisions reflect historical, economic, social, cultural, and political realities and aspirations that are critical in building a robust, patriotic, and indigenous jurisprudence for Kenya. Article 159 sub Article 1 states that judicial authority is derived from the people. That authority must be reflected in the decisions made by the courts. Close quote. In expounding the principle that the Constitution has provided its own theory of interpretation to protect and to serve its values, objects, and purposes, the retired Chief Justice his Lordship, Honorable Mutunga, had the following to say in his concurring opinion in the, the Speaker of the Senate and another versus Attorney General, the Honorable Chief Justice then had this to say. In both my respective dissenting and concurring opinions, in the matter of principle of gender representation in the National Assembly and Senate, I argue that both the Constitution 2010 and the Supreme Court Act 2011 both provide comprehensive interpretive frameworks <coughs> upon which fundamental hooks, pillars, and solid foundations for the interpretation of our Constitution shall be based. In both opinions, I provided the interpretive coordinates that should guide our jurisprudential journey as we identify the core provisions of our Constitution, understand its content, and determine its intended effect. <coughs> he proceeded to say more, which I have included, but I will not read. The Supreme Court also expounded the incorporation of non legal considerations and their importance in constitutional interpretation. In the case Communications Commission of Kenya and five others versus Royal Media Services. At paragraph uh, 56, uh, the court said this, we revisit once again the critical theory of constitutional interpretation and relate it to the emerging human rights jurisprudence based on chapter four, the Bill of Rights of our Constitution. The fundamental right in question in this case is the freedom and independence of the media. 
we have taken this opportunity to illustrate how historical, economic, social, cultural, and political content is fundamentally critical in, some, in discerning the various provisions of the Constitution that pronounce on its theory of interpretation. A brief narrative of historical, economic, social, cultural, and political backgrounds to Articles 4, sub Article 2, Article 33, Article 34, and Article 35 of the Constitution has been given above in paragraphs 145 and 146. We begin with the concurring opinion of the CJ and the President in the Tirao Amuna case, where uh, there was references to Black Law Dictionary, where it was said that references to Black Law Dictionary will not, therefore, always be enough, and references to foreign cases will have to take into account these peculiar Kenyan needs and context. It is possible to set out the ingredients of the theory of the interpretation of the Constitution. The theory is derived from the Constitution, Constitution through conceptions that may, that may, that my dissenting and concurring opinions have signaled as examples of interpretive coordinates. I'm not sure the entire quotation. Then in the case of Center for Human, Center for Rights, Education and awareness, and another, the Court of Appeal also dealt with the subject of constitutional interpretation and laid out the very principles discussed above. The Court further recounted the nexus between the principles of constitutional interpretation and the principle of statutory interpretation in the following manner. The principles on constitutional interpretation are not new, they also apply to the construction of statutes. There are other important principles which apply to the constructions of statutes, which, in my view, also apply to the construction of a constitution, such as presumption against absurdity, meaning that a court should avoid a construction that produces an absurd result, the presumption against unworkable or impracticable result, meaning that a court should find against a construction which produces an unworkable or impracticable result, presumption against and a non, a non malas or illogical result, meaning that the court should find against a construction that creates an anomaly or otherwise produces an irrational or illogical result, and the presumption against artificial result, meaning that the court should find against a construction that produces artificial result, and lastly, the principle that the law should serve public interest meaning that the court should strive to avoid adopting a construction which is in any way adverse to public interest, economic, social, and political, or otherwise. The court, as an independent arbiter of the Constitution, has fidelity to the Constitution and has to be guided by the letter and spirit of the Constitution. On our part, we wish to emphasize that the Constitution directs that it shall be interpreted in line with the doctrine of living constitutionalism. The doctrine holds that a Constitution is a living document meant to evolve over time to reflect societal changes, contemporary realities, and shifting values. It further recognizes that the law is dynamic and adaptive, adaptable to evolving circumstances, often encapsulated in the maxim that in quote, the law is always speaking. It, it underscores the constitutional provisions as not static or frozen in time, but must be understood as applying to current circumstances regardless of their original context. This interpretive approach ensures that the constitution remains relevant and effective in guiding the governance and legal framework of a modern, dynamic society. Moreover, the doctrine that the law is always speaking aligns with the purposive approach to constitutional interpretation as endorsed by courts in various jurisdictions. Under this approach, courts are required to interpret constitutional provisions in a way that gives effect to their underlying purpose and objectives rather than adhering to a rigid or literal reading. Further, courts have emphasized the need for a flexible and forward-looking interpretation of the Constitution to meet the needs of a 
modern state. With the above interpretive principles in mind, we will now deal with other issues posed in the application under consideration.